Hello friends, welcome to my channel HVACR Engineers. Be professionals. Welcome friends. This video, we're going to understand all about subcooling. What is subcooling? Happening in which part of system? Benefits of subcooling? Why, the correct subcooling is an important possible cause for low subcooling? Possible cause for high subcooling? How to measure the subcooling? Diagnosis use subcooling. What is the normal subcooling range? Important points to take note. Before, go to subcooling, we should understand the pH chart first, and, where the subcooling happens. Here, you can easily understand, the process extended, after the condenser, saturated liquid line. The process which is, extended to subcooled liquid region, is called subcooling. The vaporate condenser, completely changed the liquid, before enter to expansion device, that added cooling is, called subcooling. What is subcooling? Simply said, the liquid cooled, below its saturation temperature. Subcooling is, the process of cooling the liquid refrigerant, below its saturation, or, condensing temperature, for a given pressure. The degree of subcooling, or the amount of subcooling, at a given condition, is the difference between, its saturation temperature, and, the actual liquid line refrigerant temperature. Subcooling tell us, what's going on, in condenser, also gives an, indication of how much refrigerant, is in the condenser. Low subcooling equals thirsty evaporator, which means, little refrigerant in the system. High subcooling equals flooded evaporator, which means, excessive refrigerant. Benefits of subcooling, 1. To increase, plant refrigeration capacity, 2. To prevent, flash gas formation, ahead of the expansion valve, 3. In a cooling plant, there is an advantage in, having the liquid subcooled. If the liquid line is, exposed via heat flux, there is a risk, that the liquid will start to expand, before the thermal expansion valve, flash gas, and, the evaporator will fail to work. Why the correct subcooling, is an important. Subcooling is beneficial, because it prevents, the gas, or, vapor completely convert to liquid, and that ensures, liquid refrigerant enters the expansion device. This is very important, as vapor, entering the expansion device, can, damage the expansion device. Possible causes of low subcooling, 1. Low subcooling, indicates a condenser, that is starved, for liquid refrigerant, can result, in a low refrigerant charge, 2. Long liquid lines, 3. Inadequate condenser size, 4. Low condenser airflow, 5. Liquid lines, exposed to high ambient temperatures, 6 can result in loss of compressor motor cooling. Possible causes of high subcooling, 1. High subcooling indicates, a condenser flooded with liquid refrigerant, 2. Liquid line restriction, 3. Refrigerant overcharge, 4. Low outdoor ambient temperatures, 5. Metering device not feeding correctly. How to determine, or, measure the subcooling, 1. Measure and record the liquid line pressure reading, from your gauges. 2. Then take the temperature of, the liquid line after the condenser, or, before the expansion device. 3. Using a PT chart, to find the saturation temperature, for the liquid pressure obtained. 4. Subtract the liquid line temperature, from the saturation temperature. The difference is, the amount of subcooling. Subcooling equals saturated liquid temperature, minus liquid line temperature. Here the sum example, for how to calculate the subcooling. Subcooling is, one of the best methods, to determine, if the refrigerant charge is correct. It is also, a useful calculation, for troubleshooting, as it shows exactly, what is happening in the condenser. Possible diagnosis using subcooling. Allow the unit to operate for 15 to 20 minutes, before checking the subcooling. This is to ensure stable operation. If the temperatures, and, pressures will not stabilize, look for other problems, before attempting to check subcooling. 
an improper subcooling value, can indicate various system problems, including overcharge, undercharge, liquid line restriction and others. If superheat is high, and subcooling is low, charge must be adjusted. System is undercharged. If superheat is low and subcooling is high, charge must be adjusted. System is overcharged. If superheat is high and subcooling is high, could have blockage in coil, orifice, or line set. If superheat is low, and, subcooling is low, orifice could be too big, there is no orifice in the unit, or the orifice is stuck in refrigerant is bypassing it. What is required, or, normal subcooling range? Generally speaking, 10 degrees, to 12 degrees of subcooling, at the outlet of the condenser coil is, most common, but, you must look for the proper design subcooling, for the particular system you are working on. Some systems will require, subcooling readings of up to max 16 degrees, for maximum efficiency, and capacity. Subcooling should be around, 10 to 16 degrees, is the optimum range. Important points to take note for subcooling. Subcooling is, always advantageous, for a refrigeration system as it increases the net refrigeration effect, that is efficiency of refrigeration system. Subcooling for increased compressor capacity, and efficiency. The amount of refrigerant quantity is, related to subcooling. Add refrigerant, to increase subcooling. Recover refrigerant, to reduce subcooling. Thank you all. Please like and comment the videos. Share my channel with your friends. Subscribe my channel for more updated videos. Thank you see you next video.